This week on AwesomeCast, we talk about the problem with Xbox, some interesting help out ideas, and how do we adjust to this new Twitter. All that and more. This edition of AwesomeCast is brought to you by... PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line advertising. Hey guys, it's that time to get geeky, get awesome. It's the Awesome Cast live here from Pittsburgh, PA, uh, down here in the studios. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. With me on the couch, as usual, is John Chichilla at Chilla. How you doing? Not too bad. How are you? All right, all right. I, I realized I didn't change my graphics from last week. It still <laughs> says, uh, once new things for his face, which is still true. <laughs> And there's something coming up here that I haven't figured out. But what are you? I, I can't remember. We likes to write things for reels. And actually, well, well hopefully that, that hasn't come in yet. Yeah. The 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 uh, equal note that I got. Oh, out. okay. Hasn't come in yet. Bought from my wife uh, for her birthday. This was two episodes ago. We were talking about all the pens. Mm-hmm. Um, they sent me, hey, it shipped like late last week. Mm-hmm. No tracking number or anything. I don't even know how it's being shipped. So that's... <laughs> We'll get it someday, it's I guess. Not, it's obviously not coming up as a now card. <laughs> it's obviously not coming up as a now card or anything. So we'll we'll see how I'm I'm very excited to see how uh, if she enjoys. I hope mm-hmm. she enjoys it as her birthday gift. Uh, but still, but this is the awesome cast. Uh, we uh, record here live every Tuesday at 6:30 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Um, and of course, you can check out all the episodes and everything at sorgatronmedia.com. And uh, follow us on iTunes. We're on Roku via the Blip TV app on YouTube on Stitcher. A lot of you guys out there listening in Pittsburgh and beyond because we are a Pittsburgh-based uh, kind of show, kind of the, the the flyover states we try to cover, and a different opinion, a different angle. People that work in different kind of tech sectors. Uh, myself, you know, just refresh. I, well, you know, of course, I'm the podcaster, video, you know, kind of person. Uh, broadcaster in general, I uh, refresh people memories. What, what, what's your? Where do you so, come from there, Chilla? So, I mean, my thing. I, I, I really enjoy the home automation. I really enjoy gadgets. And, and, your, and your job is gadgetry. My job is gadgetry, and but my concentration in my job is mobility. Yes. So that's what makes my For job a fun. Certain financial institution <laughs> yes. out there that For, might the, be pretty big and have yeah. a ball field. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Uh, you know, uh, they may have colors of orange. Uh, I don't know. There you go. There you go. Uh, but but so I, I think it's very important for us to establish we're not just some schmoes in a – okay, we are some schmoes in a piss. But we, we're into this and we yeah. do stuff with this stuff. Uh, and, and I hope that gives a little bit of perspective. Like like we, a lot of this we do apply in our mm-hmm. day-to-day. A lot of stuff I talk about here I do apply in video or my social media efforts for these shows uh, or other other products or, or, or services or anything. Mm-hmm. And you too. You know? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's and why I, I actually use this also as, as a cr- way to crowdsource. I mean yeah. people comment on things. I mean I take that back to work with me. There's, there's many a times where I've been in a meeting and I say, you know, I do a podcast and, you know, we talked about something like this and this, you know, we talked to multiple people and this is what they said and this is different people's opinion. Mm-hmm. If you, I mean, crowds were the company I work for is kind of backwards at times when it comes to technology. Any big company is. But let's, it, let's be honest. Any big company yeah. is. But, I mean, you talk about crowdsourcing. I think it's a very powerful medium and I don't think enough people embrace it. And I've tried to really bring that and show its value at work. And this is one place where we can we can definitely get that yep. crowdsource. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about our awesome things of the week. Well, first, you have an interesting quasi-awesome thing of the week before you get to your awesome thing. Because you had something you were planning on talking so, about. So I had planned, I, I got to attend the one of the Xbox launch events. They did three in Pittsburgh. They did one on Friday at the Pitt University campus. I'm not 100% sure exactly where it was at. I'm guessing it was probably in their quad type area where they they have a grassy whatever. Um then there's then they on Saturday the one I went to and Crazy Kraus went to um, was at the Walmart in Cranberry and then on Sunday they were at the Steelers game so Saturday um, ran out I, I had to do some work around my grandfather's house ran out to to Cranberry um, 
expected a little bit bigger of an event, but it wasn't. It it, it was it was right sized for the number of people they had. Definitely, there were there were, you didn't have to wait in line to play a game. Had a really cool like SUV. The speakers hooked up. I think they had four, five, six monitors. Um, I have some pictures off to post them out to Twitter and uh, Instagram. But um, so Kraus and I were there. You know, we got we got they had FIFA and they had Forza. Um, I'm not a huge FIFA fan, so I'm not. I'm gonna admit I didn't. I didn't play FIFA, but got to play Forza. Graphics were amazing. I mean, like driving around a raceway is not my idea of of, of a great time playing a video game, but the graphics made it all worth it. I mean, like you drive, you hit a cur you hit a curve, and the sun's in front of you. You're getting um, like reflection off the the um, glass of your car. You're getting like Halo effect, uh, like it's just really, really good game graphics. I mean, I can't, I can't talk enough about how great the graphics look, and it's not just looking at things that would normally be to you in focus, like the speedometer or something like that. I'm talking about looking out into the distance, mountains, hills, everything just looks so realistic there's a tag here in the corner you can't mm -hmm. see it on the screen but it does say all in-game footage for this video was shown on the video version yeah and the interesting thing like i mean reflections are great and that's something they've had i mean even back to project gotham had had good reflection but this it, it's almost like you sometimes when you play a video game and you see like a cutscene. and the graphics are really really good in that cutscene, and then you get into the in-game play and it's it's so so this I felt like the entire game was cutscene graphic greatness. I, I I can't I can't tell enough how good of a job they really did um, with the graphics in this game. And and if all the other games follow suit to this, which I'm sure they will, uh, I I think they will have a successful product. Um, the one thing I was a little let down about, I think Microsoft really needs to send some people that are a little more technical about the device that you know i ask them a question about hooking it up to a tivo i don't have cable and they're pretty much well if you have an hdmi cord it works there i mean my question is is the guide gonna work because that that's one thing that i'm really interested mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. um now now from my and from my understanding i was actually reading a little bit of article on uh on how that uh, their fight for the living room and everything mm -hmm. i think the verge had it on um and I think it it, it, it it passes through. You still have like all it can do is do channel and volume. Like well, they like, but like you they, can say you can do something like uh, Xbox. What's what's coming up on Comedy Central? Yeah, but I th I think that's more um, the guide is online. Much like you can go to mm -hmm. TV like TVGuide.com and get your lineup. I think they're just pulling in. Oh, you have Comcast in Pittsburgh then this is your lineup. So we'll just filter that in with your search results alongside whatever, you know, Hulu and Netflix and everything. And I'm fine if they do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm completely fine if they do that because that, that means it will work Yeah, with it, virtually everything. I look at, like, things like Get Glue. Mm -hmm. Like, when I look at Get Glue, TV Guide, I'm trying to think of all the info-based apps I have um, on my devices. Like, those know about open-air antenna-based systems in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh and I get things that are tailored for me. I'm hoping that they can pull that. What is, same does Get Glue type of pull data. up a schedule? Um, it will show you things that are airing right now or upcoming. Oh, see, I don't use that too much since <laughs> all I have is over the air. Yeah. So I figure, you know, well, it's like four channels. What do I, you know, that I would be into? Yeah. You know what? You know anything that would? What they tell you? Like, what's everybody watching? Like, right. what's the top three things everybody's watching or something like that? But, but it, it, it would always be the same three channels. Yeah. So why would I even bother? Well, so. oh, and. Where, where I live, maybe it's because I'm a little higher up or it's because of my antenna placement, etc. I mean, even as an open air um, subscri non-subscriber, yeah. I guess you could call it. I mean, I get probably about 26 to 30 channels. Now, you're right. And, uh, and I do, too. I, I, but I'm saying, let's be honest, if you just had those in the top, like, three or four things, right. it will be the same three or four channels. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I don't think anybody uh, checks in the Rex Seebeck specials on this thing. No. So. But I, I would say like your Ion, your CW, your Fox, your NBC, your CBS. I'm probably missing one. ABC, NBC, CBS. Yeah, like CBS, right now, right CW, now I'm getting Fox, now on TV. Oh, see, you know, Ion. I must. So there's six. I um, must not have the set right because it, it's definitely. I think it's definitely showing me cable stuff. 
Okay. Show me Blade Trinity's playing somewhere, and I don't think it's on any of mine. Well, Blade Trinity might be playing. If you ever notice, um, I've noticed a lot of movies coming on the the second channel four WTAE on this, on this, on this. Yes, this channel, not, they not had, that channel. Not this, this channel. channel. It's this. <laughs> this TV. It's like, oh my god. Which I think they also play pit basketball or something. I saw. Yeah, and the so, CW also plays like I think uh, what's the Pittsburgh Power? There are our indoor. Oh, really? Yeah, football. that's true. That's true too. Um, so I, I think you, I think you might be surprised at how many things you would see and, and kind of like a crowd response to to certain TV shows. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's worth it. The, the funny part was the other thing is, so you weren't allowed the 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 devices they had there were dev kits um, hooked up to the monitors. Um, each Xbox obviously had just its one. I'm guessing one game in it. Maybe it was right on the Xbox itself. Maybe they didn't have discs. They they were very clear in the fact that the games were 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 demo unfinished versions of the game. Things might be altered in, in, when you actually buy the game. Um, I did my the things I was interested in was like the split panel. Could I hold a Skype conversation or or Internet Explorer while I had a game or a video in the in the side window? Kind of the snap to that that Windows eight kind of brings to the table there and i i hit the the xbox button and uh it brought me to the menu and i was quickly yelled at by one of the people from from microsoft that were standing there and to me if, if you're trying to show off one of your devices mm-hmm. i'm not saying it has to because we know it's not finished yet we know day one there you're gonna have a patch and i'm fine with that it's just either lock it in where i can't leave or or do something or just make it clear when you walk up. Say, "Hey, this this console you're going on to is only meant to play the game. Please don't leave the game. Give some kind of interaction." There weren't enough people that they were overwhelmed with a thousand people waiting in line to play these games. Yeah. So it's something they definitely could have handled. And if I really wanted to be a jerk, the way they had the panel set up, I could have walked around the one that they couldn't have seen and just started playing. But oh, yeah. I, I, overall, I mean, I was really impressed with the unit. They didn't have anything that inter- interacted with Connect, but so I, so so all all it was was just a couple of games. Yeah, in the in the long run, which it, it just feels like a lot to do so little. Yeah, from the sounds of it, like you could have, you probably could have set up some kind of virtual machine online where people could go in and play for <laughs> for five minutes. Yeah, give people five minutes at a clip, like with a Steam engine. And some DLC. I mean, make it where you have to have Windows or something like that. But I'm sure they could have achieved this a multitude of ways versus the the limited capabilities that you had walking up to one of these units. But I think this was more... I, I think they were trying to get it at the the Twitter 140 characters or less. They were trying to get you at the two minutes or less walking into the store. Mm-hmm. Now, at Pit, Pitt's campus, I would imagine it was being more student student based i would have guessed there to be more people that wanted to sit there and actually play with it if they're still on the fence about buying it or they just want to see it before they buy it yeah um the football game i find it interesting i don't think they have a, a football demo um so i'm guessing it would have been good if they would have had like madden or something yeah. like that but I don't know. All in all, like I said, I was impressed with the device, not impressed with the how they presented it and what they did making such a... I mean, I don't think they highly publicized it, but it was publicized enough. Um, I got emails about it. I know different podcasts talked about it, different Twitter people talked about it. Um, but overall, I think it, the, the, the device was, was amazing. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to actually call up the uh, launch because I wonder if they're going to get a Madden game like this. They announced week. like there was 25 titles at launch, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Um. I know uh, Kraus has one pre-ordered. I know a couple other guys at work have have them pre-ordered. Um. So uh, yeah, I mean, I can go into my awesome thing of the week, or we can toss no, it to you and go ahead. Bring it back to me. Go ahead. So mine, mine's actually pretty simplistic. Um, Twitter today actually released custom timelines. And when you get into the, our, our social media aspect, and, and I know we talked about maybe some guests upcoming on the show to talk about social media, I think 
the idea of a custom timeline where I can build a timeline that gets kind of what Google calls their vanity URLs. So you can register your custom timeline, you get it gets its own URL, mm -hmm. and then you can base it on people, hashtags, a bunch of different information. So I look at this, we talk about different things on our show, or we, we ask questions throughout the week. Yeah. Think if you could hash, <clears throat> get everyone to use a certain hashtag, like AwesomeCastTL or a AcastTL, you could have all kinds of just awesome cast in a single timeline that you could then publicize out and say, here's all of our fan interactions. Here's what we're so, doing. Here's what's so going on. on the, this is the week. more than just, I do a search for a hashtag and I'll get the same thing, right? Yes. It's because you'll get a vanity URL. I think there's some customization built around it. Now let's see. Well, now, now it says to, to try it out, uh, to go to tweet deck. I actually pulled up my tweet deck and it does pop up and here it is. Right away, I, uh, introducing custom timelines, create custom timelines, add tweets to your custom timelines. Uh, you can drag tweets from other columns and drop them into a custom. Uh, share your custom timelines. This this reminds me a lot. I actually just got to uh, poke around a little bit for Storify, mm -hmm. where you take several things from different social medias and make a like preferred list of it. That's um, cool. Several like, but this is just Twitter. But mm -hmm. it sounds like the same concept. So I'm cr it, it. It sounds like. Like, uh, what I, I like for an event, let's say like PodCamp just happened. What if I want to take the night, the greatest tweets from PodCamp and put it all together in this list? And now we put that up on the site. You know, I, is, is that more like kind of the use case here? I, I think so. I mean, they're, they're saying here, share the best tweets about a topic you care about or an event planned or unplanned. What's happening right now. Collect the best tweets about a TV show. Yeah. I just look at it like you could then take and really publicize something you're doing or something that, you, that you're interested in what's what's something that we want to do like uh, um wearable technology uh, so that now anything that you find google glass related or pebble related or you know anything in, in that you can now post this url back out to other people and say hey if you want to see the wearable technology stuff that awesomecast is looking at it, it it quickly gives you that capability to 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 give people that URL and I look at it as almost like a an RSS feed. Hey, the there's a Google Glass. It just popped up. Here. Yeah, there you go. Um, I give a I I look at it as it, it it's it's almost like an RSS feed of the stuff you want to keep tabs. And you on. do get a drop down here. Add to custom timeline. Now I have the wearable tech custom timeline. So I hit the check mark on that, but it doesn't really give me. So so now what? Hit enter. Do I just exit? Is it already over here? So now there it is in my custom mm -hmm. timeline. So now, uh, so what? So I get a custom URL from this, right? You're supposed to. Uh, so if Go I want to share, share uh, view on twitter.com. And now I, it's uh, twitter.com slash sorgatron slash timeline. I got a number. So I imagine I can go in this and also, and there's, and there's you know, the, the YouTube video. That I just uh, shared the tweet over from the Google at Google Glass. Mm -hmm. uh, so there you go. Um, wow, this is that's kind of cool. Now and then, what like you know for me, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about okay, what, what's something we could use this for? So I mean, we could put like an embedded timeline on Mayhem Show on this and say, hey, here's the highlights of the stuff from the week that you missed. Mm -hmm. It's because before we would always put. You know, anybody that mentioned at Mayhem Show or everything from the at Mayhem Show account. And it loses context, maybe. You know, maybe you just put a best of, you know, mm -hmm. or you get spammers in there. Right. They're adding you so they get into that because it's just a dead search. You right. know, anything that has that term is going to pop up on your page. Mm -hmm. uh, I know some people that have taken that down because they, they're like, well, we are getting a lot of weird stuff in there. You know, yeah. or somebody starts trolling you, that all pops up on your page. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's. I don't know who or what service is doing it, but there must be another at Chilla out there, and he must be, um, like a hardcore rapper, because I get a <laughs> lot of odd, odd at mentions, and I have a feeling they're coming from other services. Like if you remember, I know Instagram started really doing a cleanup on how they did at mentions that were copied over to Twitter. Yeah. Um, when they were a little more Twitter friendly, but um. So I'm sure there's some other chilla on some other service that someone's friends with, and they're they're cross posting back to to 
they're cross-posting from the other service back to Twitter, which then is giving me a ton of mentions, and I have no clue of what the context of what the heck they're talking about is. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. I just view this as it's something you could easily use to curate content and then use to get your name out there or, or to, like you said, host on a website. I, I just think it's a really cool idea, and, and it just shows you that, that Twitter is trying to continue to innovate mm -hmm. and give people capabilities with their service. I know, obviously, they had their IPO um, last week. Um, they're doing fairly well with that. And, and I just I think it, I, I think it's pretty cool. I, and, and I think it's it is a good idea, but I think it's just not a new idea. But again, you got to mm -hmm. say, okay, well, how much are other people using Storify, for instance? Right. You know, this is something now it's built in. Now people that are completely embedded in Twitter, and that's the thing. You know, people say with the pictures, it's like, oh, now it's looking like Facebook. Um, so now, you know, why would I use you know you know if I'm just dedicated to doing Twitter, why would I use this over something like Storify where I can like, well, okay, everybody used everything. We can work all that in, you know. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's a new feature. Twitter. I've never used Storefry, so now I'm looking it up and I'm like, hmm. Yeah, I only cool poked thing. around like briefly, but it's really nice that like you can it, you can pull from Instagram, from YouTube, from Twitter, from Facebook, um, and do searches for them and say, hey, here. Again, the same thing. Like if you want to do something for PodCamp, I would pull from all those things because mm -hmm. we did not obviously we didn't just put stuff on Twitter. We put stuff on YouTube, you know. Um, I just actually, while I was going through here, um, the nice uh, thing about this too, though, is I don't, I'm trying to consolidate all of the platforms I'm on and create mm -hmm. some kind of method to the madness of, and it's something that I, I, I really want to work on is trying to create my own timeline. If I write something or I po have something on Instagram or I put something on my DeviantArt site or, or whatever, mm -hmm. I want to try to create like a cross post almost flow chart to help get my name out there a little more and really try to publicize what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. The thing I like about the Twitter piece is I'm still only having to handle another platform. If now, if I go, oh, but I store file looks really cool. I can go out there and join, but now I have to go to a yet another platform to build stuff out. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. look at it as, so now I'm going to be, so now you don't have to go um, anywhere, but yeah. an idea how you could use this actually, Will Reynolds Young, he did a session at PodCamp and I, I actually came across this by accident just because I have the, the PodCamp uh, column in my tweet deck. Um, he has, there's a session that he recorded um, and he has a storify of everybody talking during his talk including pictures and everything alongside it so now he's able to pull that conversation in along with the actual conversation that he had mm -hmm. uh and he, he had a lot of activity during his maybe a little bit of video uh during his uh session that is a pretty cool use of that right yeah. there um I, i'd love to kind of play around and see like okay you know what did i do during my session and maybe pull all that together you know any of that discussion um something to think about now you can deal with twitter if most of the stuff's on twitter um, but again, with him, like I think some of this stuff, yeah, some of this stuff was on Instagram, um, mostly Twitter though. But again, you see, it's it is mostly Twitter. So, this is funny. So I tried logging into Storify with with uh, with Twitter, and I authorized the app, and it redirects me back. Oh, now it's working. I just I earlier I had a message that said that uh storify was overloaded at the moment hmm it fell while you oh, let's take the tour login <laughs> anyways it takes longer than 17 seconds but they claim it takes 17 seconds <laughs> awesome uh well mine um again is probably uh one of the, the only problem with this again kind of the um you know following through thing i i, I can't figure out where and I didn't see in the article or anything like at what point I can install this and where. And there's a page on their site for it. Um, Fancy, I think for a while, has had a glass app. Um, you know, the Fancy.com, mm -hmm. which is, I don't know, how would Rob's, you describe it? One of it? Rob's favorite sites. It's one of Rob's favorite sites. I, I mean, it, it's... Um, it's fancy stuff. It's tech stuff. It's chic stuff, you know. Stuff that's probably more expensive than I would probably pay for it. Um, but they have this, uh, a, a Google Glass app where and it looks like it's based on color and everything so like this guy in this video he's got glass and he's looking at his 
uh, I don't know what the heck he has over. He's got a coffee maker, and he's at the side of his room, and he takes a picture, um, and there's a fancy color search you can share that picture with. So that goes up, and there's a little bit of time lapse, and like a lot of these, they'll kind of just come back with search results when it's ready, and it says, uh, 20 matching things found by fancy, and I'll go through and say, hey, here's some things that will go along with your decor, I guess. Uh, and you can go through and buy it or fancy it from there. Um, they're labeling it in this article on The Verge as um, uh, the first uh, company to actually profit from their Google Glass app. Because there's very explicit instructions that you can't advertise. There's certain things you can't do you know, on a money-making side. Mostly the advertising is the issue. Um, but there's this. I know there's another one, Crystal Shopper which I never got to work. It would always crash on mine. But okay. kind of the same thing. I could do a uh, voice search for something, and it'll actually come back with 10 results uh, from Amazon. And then I think it would actually add them to my Amazon wish list, perhaps, or send me an email. Uh, okay. But it wasn't like directly they made money off of going into Amazon kind of thing. They Maybe they had an affiliate link or something like that. Uh, but still, it's all these workarounds. Nobody's serving me ads. I don't think I want them to. Mm -hmm. You know, it's already weird enough getting the Mashable articles. I wish I had a better tech outlet than Mashable because mm -hmm. some of the stuff that comes up, if I can, because I, I, I know I've had some weird ones earlier today, like, uh, oh, hey, uh, Gmail now lets you save attachments directly to Google Drive, which is something I heard about this morning. You know, I think that's a great great add-on that they had uh oh yeah why do i want to know jennifer lawrence comforts crying fan is all around awesome two hours ago from mashable like this is the kind of <laughs> yeah, stuff that's... that's kind of like really you 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 interrupted me for that you know and that's where you know you got to be very careful about what you put on here again you know i'm tired of the new york times i'm like i wish i could can i get the post gazette something local or you know or just something like that give, like can you give me just mashable anything that's tagged tech yeah, it doesn't break you down, at least last yeah. I checked. I'm like, when can I add The Verge to this that I actually read? You know, mm -hmm. When can I ask, uh, add some of my wrestling news sites or, or, or a couple of blogs I follow or something like that? You know, Which you kind of can with the Simple Wing stuff. Uh, but it's not, like I put a Wrestling Mayhem Show app in there. But all it says, like anytime I post something to the, to the blog, it just pops up a screen that says Wrestling Mayhem Show. Mm. So I don't think I did it right. Um, but there's other stuff like for National Geographic's through that through that service. You know, it, it really just kind of serves stuff through to to glass. But you can't point it at an RSS feed. And I think that's every... more or less what it's doing. So could you point it to the Verge's RSS feed? I don't know if you're allowed to put it to somebody else's. Like okay. I think you have to own the content to in order content. to do that. Uh, but it'd be curious. I, I almost tried, but I didn't want to get my account shut down in case I was wrong. So, um, but you know, again, more stuff. It, Again, again, kind of with the caveat of like awesome thing, but not awesome. Um, they just did an update last week for XE11. Not a lot to it, like some extra stuff for Google now. A couple, I think there's some probably just a lot of bug updates. The start, the starting up process is um, different. Like when you when you activate it, mm -hmm. which I'm sure they cleaned that up yeah. a little bit since um, all these people with invites that were just sent out, like that I could invite three other people. Mm -hmm. um, they're not making them go to New York City. Right. They're not making them go to LA or anything like that. They're just sending it to them. And so now you have, to, you have to attend a help out, I think. Do, do you have to attend a help I, out? I think you have to do something along. That makes sense. Those that notes. makes sense. And there's a whole additional thing for help outs why mm -hmm. they probably rolled those out. And they're like, yeah. oh, we can just do it here, you know. Um, but they took away functionality in Twitter which is like the primary thing that I use on my glass. <laughs> uh, because before I was like, oh, great, I'll remember to retweet and favorite stuff, you know, you know, and I did you know, for, for the longest time with, with this. Um, I can only reply now. That's odd. Yeah. You can't favorite. You can't. No, they took it away. That's as a well, bummer. On, on the last update. Do now, wait, do they, do they make the Twitter piece or does Twitter make a Twitter piece? That's what I'm wondering. I, well, I think it's more mm -hmm. of an internal process then. Or is it like Twitter updated their API and they're behind? Could be. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure it's, I, I would guess. I, I'm guessing they're not in a, some kind of disagreement like the old Instagram Twitter. Well, Twitter. It's we're we're going to remove your Instagram pictures It took a little bit for timeline. Twitter to get up there. And even like Facebook, all I can do is I think I can share pictures to Facebook and that's about it. Mm. So, and actually, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I kind of want to turn Twitter off and back on because there was a few weeks ago where it just stopped working. You try rebooting it. You try turning it off and on again. 
Did I try it? Is it plugged in? No, it shouldn't be. <laughs> uh, ah, anyway. I saw something for the for Google Glass today that they're they're gonna. Someone figured out how to enable, I think, access to what's their music service? Is it Google Music? Well, I think I, I think the word is one of the updates is going to be a Google Music okay. application. Um, but I think someone already figured out how to get it working. Oh yeah, so oh, I'm, I'm sure there, there. Well, there's plenty of stuff that will people sideloading their own apps and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but again, just kind of want a pure experience. I don't want to hack it. I want to just like okay. You know, I want it to work. You know, I, I want to see what it does day to day. You know, it's annoying enough with some of the stuff that already crashes. <laughs> I don't want to experiment that much beyond it. Um, but speaking of, you know, help outs. Uh, like I said, we've been doing a lot of questions on, on social media, on the Twitter, on the Facebook and everything. Um, and uh, you responded to this one about like, what, what what was the weirdest help outs you think that you would attend or something yeah. like that? Well, and it wasn't, I don't think it was phrases you would attend. What would be the oddest? The help outs that someone what, could host what be, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, what would that? be a weird thing for Google help outs uh, for you to find on the site or did you find on it? And you had yeah, some and ideas. And I said like butch- being a, like how to butcher your own meat <laughs> or taxidermy. Like, and, but, and, and, but, but it actually got me thinking and we kind of brought this up I think last week is the help outs like I listened to some podcasts and was reading some blogs about how they work and and, and, and things like that. And, and I look at the things that, like, the only thing that I could come back to that I would want is for, like, home repair type stuff, which is why I was bringing up, like, how do I hang drywall? Mm-hmm. Um, which they got? Call the Home Depot yeah, guys, right? the Home Depot. But, m- like, I look at it as nine times out of ten in those cases, I- I'm not going to have all of the stuff I need. So... Are they going to be able to help me out making that checklist? Well, and that's then, the other thing, too. And that's why something like the Home Depot guy is free. Because mm-hmm. he's going to be like, uh, like, dude, I don't even know where to start. Can you help me? You know, you're <laughs> like, all right, you got to do this. You got this. You know, hey, t- turn your phone to that so I can see what the wall looks like you're trying to do. You know, uh, oh, you're going to need that. You know, I mean, that, that's the other thing. I said that visual idea is mm-hmm. going to be even more. Like, isn't there some, like, there's like ones like somebody helps you to draw, you know, or design mm-hmm. or something like there that. There was someone, someone helps you put on your makeup. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of interesting, wasn't it? Like, you just got the thing there. It's like, oh, now do this, you know, and you just got like your tablet there in a mirror looking at you. And like, that's like, wow, I, you can just put that anywhere against you, you know. But I look at it as, will, will they help you create the checklist? Will they, because think about it, now you have it on a phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, now they can shop with me. There's going to be a personal shopper, I'm sure. That yeah. looks bad on you. That looks good on you. No, you shouldn't get that. There you go. Um, but are they going to go shopping with you, and then and then you come home and you're still getting helped out actually doing the task? I can't find taxidermy on here. You can't find taxidermy. No taxidermy. So there's nope. there's there's the billion dollar idea right there. There you go. Oh well, there's a lot of I don't know about butchering, but there's a lot of chef stuff. When I put I just put okay. in meat because I wanted something a little broader. So uh, let's talk about sauces with uh, Ludovic Busy for uh, fifteen bucks for thirty minutes. Um, and I still it is it's a good place. I actually did an article uh, earlier this week uh, that you don't need Google Hang or Google Helpouts um, because there's YouTube. Because well, not because <laughs> there's YouTube. No, I mean as somebody uh, teaching. You know. Okay. We talked about like, well, what, what if we like, what if I teach people to do social media? What if I teach people to do do this thing? You know, and then I can. That's kind of like a business venture for me that I can do via uh, uh, Helpouts. Um, so, I mean, I just kind of talked about, like, well, you know, really all the tools are there. You know, uh, you, you, you can have a video chat client. We got YouTube, Google Hangouts, payment methods. We all have access to PayPal and stuff like that. Uh, you, we all can go s- use Twitter and social media to, to gain those leads and everything. But in the end, you know, it's that it's that Google juice. It's that mm-hmm. fact that it might be integrated in where you start searching for taxidermy and now you got a google ha- help out to, to 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 help you out you know and that, and that's an option for that you know i think it's just the built-in well they're, they're keeping you they're audience. keeping you in the ecosystem and mm-hmm. that's where i think one of the things that you brought up a few minutes ago was now i can take an, an attachment out of gmail and i can detach it to my google drive mm-hmm. i really like that because now if I'm in, in Gmail and I detached Google Drive and I have the Google Drive applications on all my, my computer PCs or computer whatever device you have, 
now I have it on all of them. Well, uh, to that, I actually, I dived in. I, well, I, I forget, I don't know what I did, but I forgot that Gmail and Drive and Pictures all are one thing now mm -hmm. for that initial 15 gigabytes you get. Uh, I hit my limit because I think I turned on full, or it turned on full image upload. Okay. So now it's taking up way more for pictures. So I don't know how that's going to go for me. Because like, if you do like the normal size, it's apparently unlimited for photos. Okay. I don't know how much I want to do that. You know, that's that's the other like kind of balance I have. So, but I did um, go ahead and pay the five dollars a month for the hundred gigabytes initially. I'm like, let's see how this goes. Canceled because I just reformatted my uh, laptop here, the, the old MacBook Pro. Um, and I canceled my backblaze for it. And I think what I'm going to do is just any documents I work on on my laptop, uh, I'm going to try to default save them to Google Drive. And that way I don't have to worry about my laptop went, meh, you know, there you go. Uh, instead of paying that, re well, and then, you know, that redundancy, that's five bucks. I'm not paying the backblaze and so I'm paying to Google Drive. I still have backblaze backing up, by the way, 15 terabytes on my main computer wow. up in the cloud. Well, so, so there, there, there's an interesting theory, and it's not necessarily 100% good for, for backup purposes. One of the things that I we I didn't get to cover last week, and, and I think it's on the Flipboard, and it's in the show notes, and wherever. Um, there's a the device called the Transporter, and it's your own personal Dropbox, but you host it out of your house, and it's a device that you just plug a USB I think I've drive seen these. into it. I think I've seen so these, a, like like the Pogo plugs or something. It's kind of like the Pogo plug, at the, but this this device lets you plug in any hard drive or hard drive array to. Okay. And then it makes it like Dropbox. There's there's apps for for all I'm kinds interested. Of I'm interested in like hooking yeah. one of those things up into a Drobo and and just you know, um, only problem is then okay, so you have a cloud drive sitting in your house. Mm-hmm. That doesn't help you with backup. Backup outside of your. House. I just look at it as there's constantly a, I, I constantly have a need where oh that that file is back on my machine at home. I log me in back to my machine, then I go to that machine and copy it to Dropbox. So now I have it on this mobile device over here. Mm -hmm. Like this just makes it where okay now I just plug in all my drives into this thing because right now I have them plugged into the to a router. I have the router that has one USB port that that has a hub off of it. I have multiple drives off the back of that, um, so all the machines in the house can get to it. Now I could take that same concept, and now if I'm not just at home, I can then get to like my own personal cloud, private. I guess you could call it my own private cloud. Hey, if you're security conscious, that makes mm -hmm. sense, right? Yeah, because I mean, it I don't really want does. To, like there are some files that maybe I shouldn't be 100% sharing but there are times where where i need to share a file that's that's rather large and i don't want to get flagged by dropbox or whatever i mean you look at how many people have apple dev accounts and you're allowed up to x amount of devices to test with and how many people at let people add their devices to their dev account and then they need to pass them the the files for the iphone or ipad i mean those are getting above a gig yeah and and I don't yeah. want to I don't want to chew through a gig of Dropbox for that. Yeah, I'll just give you access to my my home yeah. my home share. So, so yeah, and this is also part of my experiment of because I, I whenever we you know I think we when we talked about Drive when it first happened was uh, well this is a good idea it's a good thing but I want to see what the ecosystem does versus Dropbox because I'm very ingrained in the Dropbox. I've gotten all my clients onto Dropbox, mm -hmm. so now it's like I can't say hey I'm on Drive now do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think I'm going to be kind of dual wielding them. See, for, they need for a, a while. They here. need a storify, but they need to call it S T O R E I F Y, and it, and it takes all of your all I, of your cloud. I think I heard storage. I think there was in, something like this, but they got hammered in legalities okay. for it. Um, but no, I think there was or something that could. Um, uh, uh, chain multiple drop boxes together, right, or something like that. Which, if you had a bunch of two gigs or whatever, and just one big box. Um, so I, I, the thing I want to also check on uh, for limitations. Uh, for instance, every month I share with, uh, you know, I do the wrestling DVDs. 
uh, and then do digitals and everything. For the wrestlers, you know, I don't want them to have to buy DVDs. I mean, the wrestlers, they don't make that much for mm-hmm. what they do, you know, like their incredible stuff in the ring. So I'm like, I, I let them have this. They want to see their matches. They want to see, you know, maybe use it for, you know, take, you know, send it to WWE or something, right? So I was sending them links out of Dropbox. And then Dropbox would suspend my links for three days because of high volume. If you if you get over 20 gigabytes of traffic from links that you share out from mm-hmm. Dropbox, they mark you as a potential uh, copyright violator because nobody should be consuming that much consuming data. that much data. So they're like, well, we think you're sharing it to too many people. It's like, no, it's just a four gigabyte file, and I share it with like ten people because of my business, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so I'm wondering if uh, that's the one test I want to see. Does, does Google Drive have the same limitations, for instance? Um, so, well, you, know, you would think if they're on the the Gmail service, you should be able to send a. There's that too. Uh, there's a share. <laughs> then it drops. And then they get mad because I just ate four gigabytes of their fifteen they had for their Gmail. I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. But if you were sharing it, it would be only hosted in one place. Yeah, that's true, too. Like, when you share the show notes with me, I don't get dinged on my storage. Well, it depends on how they do it. Because, like, when I share a, you know, that file with these guys, like, they all had to create Dropbox accounts and share the folder. Now, when it when it comes over, it, even though they're limited to a 2 gigabyte plan, uh, because it's over, it will just won't let anything else in. Okay. It allows that last file to finish and says, hey, you're over. Mm-hmm. And it stops. But see, why wouldn't they just create a pointer to the file? If they're truly doing that on the back end, they're idiots. So, uh, I, and I thought about that before. <laughs> so, yeah, they're doing it on the back end, but they're digging both sides for it. Mm-hmm. So your so the four giga, gigabytes is actually taking up my allotment and their allotment, even though it's just one thing on their server, ideally. I'm, I'm sure yeah. they're redundant and everything, but still. Um, yeah, it is kind of a weird... Like, wait a minute. Why? Why are we? You're double charging us for bits at this point. Mm-hmm. What isn't a lot of the internet doing that, anyways? Um, but no, that, that's part of the experiment. I hope to uh, work that in. I mean, already a lot of the applications I use, like uh, the teleprompter software I used, already has Dropbox and Google Drive. I think I had Documents before it was Drive. Um, so we'll keep seeing it. So this way, I have if I run into something, I have both as an option, and I can use either or. So. Um, but I do like your other question, if you want to cover that. Sure, sure. So we, that, we were just talking about Twitter. So my question is, now, now a few weeks ago, again, Twitter pictures. We mentioned mm-hmm. here briefly earlier. Um, if you go through and, and you just, and this has been a, kind of a point for complaint for me. Now, and I've been trying to use this more. If you put a picture through pics.twitter.com, through the app, through the site, through TweetDeck, you'll get a nice, there's there's WrestleFan from the Mayhem Show, or here's something else I shared. Um but you'll get these pop-up pictures like this. Vine, obviously, is going to work right away, mm-hmm. right? But they automatically pop up. There's a Google Hangout we did on Monday uh, with, with uh, some of my clients. Um, so before, my photo sharing application was more or less Instagram. Now, I think about what do I want to Instagram, what do I want to tweet that it shows up like mm-hmm. this. Um Second, or do you do them both and then put a link to? In, uh, yeah, you could you could yeah. do the Instagram link with. But the now it's become complicated. And... Now it's 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 now granted now it's going to save you know when it goes over to Facebook it's going to look great. Um, so now the question is, uh, and I'll get to this too. But also I use Hootsuite a lot for you know I'm managing multiple clients. I have to set up tweets scheduled certain times during the week, and I want to dress them up with images, but. They don't use anything but their own owl dot Lee, you know, a, a, mm-hmm. ly for short links and for pictures. So they have their own picture service that doesn't do this on Twitter. How am I going to do that? You know, yeah. how am I going to dress those up? Now I'm stuck with that. I can't go into the application, try to schedule that stuff, or I have to go out, go out in the tweet deck or something and try to schedule something, adding an extra step for me. It's killing the, the simplicity. Uh, for something like this, and maybe this is just the thing that's going to uh, take care of itself here over time, over the next you know few weeks, months, whatever, as they allow others in. Remember, Instagram used to pop up, and now it doesn't anymore because they had a disagreement, like we kind of talked about before. Um, so the question I had is, uh, do you, are you more prone to use Twitter images, um, like just through the Twitter service? Uh, versus using something like an imager, I know it's a lot of people use, or the alley with the Hootsuite, or Instagram, for instance. Are you know, does this change the way 
that you post your images. Uh, now, uh, some of the answers Juggalo John actually answered, uh, he hates having to click a link. He just wishes Twitter wasn't so <laughs> crappy with Instagram. Um, yeah, and I think about that too. It's like, oh, it's an Instagram. I got to click on it. You know, I, I think about that. You need to lower that that barrier, right? Um, uh, Eric Funky Dunk, uh, he says he's always used Twitter clients that showed pics and timelines. Don't understand why so many people seem annoyed by it. Um, okay, and I don't see... I think it's fine. Here's here's where here's where I have probably an odd opinion. Um, my my thing, and, and maybe I need to move like certain people into a list and allow that to be the public list. So there are things on my timeline that aren't always safe for work, as far as the pictures are concerned. Uh huh. Um, That's and my other question too. <laughs> so my my thing my thing is you're trying to show someone how Twitter works. And there's some random. This has happened picture. to me. Now, this has happened to me in social media. Remember, I was doing those classes at the library for social media, and then some Yahoo posts something very interesting on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, for instance. And it's like, well, this is my face. Well, apologies, you know, that, that that that'll happen. I have some interesting people on my list. Um, so that's where, but that, that's where I wish give give me a hot button at the top of the Twitter client. <laughs> Or somewhere quickly where I can turn on and off the embedded timeline photos. Or, you know, if somebody's client did that, like with a quick hot link, mm -hmm. I, I think I think it's worth it. You know what I mean? I'm going to try to pull one up here that is usually a pretty good offender. Um, not terribly uh, as bad here, but Mark Madden, for instance... I have him on, and he usually retweets a lot of, uh, right now it's just kind of wrestlers, mm -hmm. uh, but he usually retweets, there's got to be some of them down here. There we go. Well, he, a lot he, of models he, that are he, very scantily clad. So I'm at work at my holistic client, <laughs> and then this pops up just in the middle of tweet deck. Right. You know, uh, or at least like that, I go, well, at least her torso does. Um, uh, for me, another one, Paul Heyman is another one because he does the Heyman Hustle, which is a thing for the Sun magazine in England, okay. and we know how risque that gets. Yes. Um, and that's like a newspaper practice. Exactly. But, and, but exactly. That's, a, that's socially acceptable. Though. It is. It is, of course. But but it's just <clears> one of those things. It's like, oh, what's up? Well, who do you follow? It was like somebody mm -hmm. that retweeted something else that was interesting, apparently, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, but it's somebody I want to follow because I want to know what Mark Madden is saying about. Uh, uh, wrestling or local sports. I want to know what Paul Heyman's saying about wrestling uh, because I, I follow WWE. And that's just like a part of that whole thing. And now it's been visualized. Uh, now, you know, thankfully I get notifications on my phone. The pictures aren't showing up in the notifications on my phone. I think that would be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, but as I go through the timeline, it is popping up there. I think it's really nice the way they do pop up in the app. My problem is when you do and a lot of people, I'm not saying on anybody, I've seen tons of people doing this that are really big uh, locally and in the industry and, and all over the place doing this, where they'll say something, post a picture, the picture has, for instance, first first iteration of this one, I'm like, what the hell is this? And I realized it was the picture thing that just happened. Uh, I just seen when the iPad Air came out, she had a comment about, oh, iPad Air, I'm going to get one, da, da, da. And all the picture was was just the iPad Air picture from the front page. It's like, and now that's taken up text. It was like, oh, picture, mm -hmm. and you click. It was like, well, it's just an illustrated picture. But you realize what she's doing is she's putting that in there so it'll pop up on the Twitter site. Right. And visually bring your eyes to it. And that's the same idea where, you know, the thing we've been preaching a lot with Facebook and Google Plus uh, amongst all my clients is, is you've got to have something visual. You've got to, you know, again, I'm fighting the... I do the thing through Hootsuite and do, use their image service, or I put it a photo, you know, purely into Google Plus or Facebook. So you know, you ever you ever see like Google Plus? You're going through, you're going through your timeline, and then there's just a giant picture going across the like yes. all three columns. Yeah, yeah, I know what you. That's mean. what you want because that gets everybody's attention. And if I'm just putting these links to pictures instead because of using these other services, it's not going to do that ever. Facebook's getting better with it, though. They're getting bigger images whenever you post certain uh, links to, to images or sites or anything like that. Here's, here's one of the problems I do have with, with the whole Twitter picture philosophy, etc. I understand if Hootsuite or Twitterific or whatever does, does something. 
But when you look at like inline, oh, so so let's talk about the inline photos. Mm -hmm. So inline photos, I get on my iPad and iPhone. I don't get on the Mac Twitter client. I'm guessing I probably don't therefore get them on the Windows Twitter client. That might have just not been updated yet. Right. They're, but that, they're pretty behind the curve. I mean, those clients need, they need to take the Google theory and Google pushes a Hangout update. It's available for browsers. It's available in their 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 phones and their clients. It's, the phones kind of lagger a little bit, but that's probably yeah. that's probably Apple's fault. Well, and that's a thirty day. There's a thirty day um, approval process on on all the other devices. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, when you when you're when you're pushing out an update and you're touting it so much, like like I, I like the you, we were talking about the the. Um, custom timelines um give me a way to do it like they're saying okay go to tweet deck yeah uh -oh. so I, I have to use your tweet deck <laughs> service i have to use which TweetDeck. is theirs granted but um now you know but now interestingly enough tweet deck doesn't support inline vines <laughs> it isn't it uh, there was a there i because it surprised me because i just saw someone posted some vine and all it was was a link. Oh, let me see. Uh, I'll double check because I, I retweeted a vine from last night. Uh, there's a Hangout YouTube. Uh, there's that. Is in our YouTube. Uh, there should be a retweet from DJ Lunchbox from last night or the day before, maybe. I know I just saw it on my other one. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't pop up. If I go into details, maybe. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, but, so it's not, but again, it's not in line. And if I pop it up, it goes to Vine. It doesn't pop up like the videos do, like the pictures do, or anything like right. that. Or like um, when I clicked on this one, it, it launched a, it launched my browser. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's that. There's definitely a little bit of disconnect there. Um, but again, this is this is a this is a program they brought in house. You know, um, it's not theirs. TweetDeck is not theirs. TweetDeck's not there. Originally, no. Originally, you're right. So, but and, they but they did purchase them, didn't they? Yeah, and given how they've shut down updates on how many platforms, mm -hmm. and, and only know, certain platforms only get so many tokens. But it's their so own thing. No, 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 no. Twitter has shut down. They're not. What is it? I think the the iOS version, the Android version, and I know the Mac version of. Oh, that's the other. The Mac version of the Twitter client didn't they stop production on that? I don't think so, because I thought I got an update. I did, too. Not too long ago. Not to mention it's embedded in the OS. I mean, they, they're going to have to do something there, yeah. Do something. Now, here, they they get so many stars, version 2.3.1. When did that come out? Uh, Twitter support. Uh, July 16th was the last update. Mm-hmm. Now, TweetDeck recently updated, I think. That's an October fifteenth update. I'm fine if you want to keep one Twitter client made by Twitter for per OS. I'm cool with that. Give me TweetDeck, give me Twitter, whatever. Just give me consistency across the platform. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that's all I'm asking for. I think consistency is important when you're when you're talking about the social media and and the capabilities, whether it's social media or or, or not. If you don't if you don't provide consistent capabilities cross platform, it just becomes okay. I got to I got to go over here to this app to use this. Or I, I got go go to go to the website to do it this and way. And then I got to go over here. It, Which it, it isn't that why Twitter has kind of shut down the 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 Twitter application market. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're like, well, you're doing a great job with this, but we want people to see things this way, mostly because we want them to see our ads. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, right? Um, they're, and they're trying to unify that experience. They're make, they're trying to put get more control over the experience um, because it was so fractured. You know, um, you know, uh, this this images thing now pops up just like they wanted to in TweetDeck to fall in line with everything else. Uh, I get promoted tweets in, in TweetDeck. Oddly, the first thing they get promoted tweets, Hootsuite. Something I pay hmm. for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. And I think that was through Twitter and not precisely through Hootsuite itself. Um, it's like that was where they first experimented with it. So uh, it's it's interesting. Um, I, I mean... People are kind of, you know, it, and of course they just had an IPO this week, so they have to prove they are making motions. Well, they weren't to they weren't doing money. bad though. I mean, just on promoted tweets and stuff alone, what was it, six million? 
and then they're expected to make twenty million by end of year. They're still not in the red. Or they're, I mean, they're still they're, they're still in the red. They still right, are they're in the still red. in the red. But, but still, they they're. It's not like they have no. There's no plan, and they yeah. have no capability to make money, or or they fine. don't have any ideas. I am mad about it. I am mad about the pictures. It's annoying, but it's like you know, it's still Twitter. I can use just still just use Twitter the way yeah. I do. I could go back to text messages if I really wanted to. Yeah. You know, they haven't taken that away, and this is not for everybody, but this is for some people. You know. See, um, I'm a, I'm fine. I'm picture oriented. So if you put a picture out there. I'll be honest with you. I'm probably and most are nine out of ten times. And I'm gonna pay attention to your tweet I, over someone else. Now, when I, as you see like, the tweets I had, I think about, you know, is this something I want people to see? This is this, this is something I want to stop you in the timeline when you're in Twitter mm-hmm. and go see, or is this something that I want to reach out to the community on Instagram and get their feedback, which is usually just friends and such. Yeah. Um, like there's a couple of things yesterday where I'm like, okay, this is a joke. It's kind of inside. I know these people will see it, more, be more likely to see it over here on Instagram, and I and I still get likes from that, you know, way through the mm-hmm. rest of the day. I did it in the as seven thirty in the morning, and through the rest of the day, I'm still getting favorites on it. Um, I wouldn't have that if I just put a picture out on Twitter. But right. if it is something where I want somebody to be able to, because I know I ha- I can tell because I'm getting the stats from like about me and, and uh, LinkedIn and stuff. They're following through to things like this, so I want them to drop into my Twitter page. And now I want my Twitter page to be more interesting mm-hmm. visually now, right? Like I I play with I used to Instagram pictures of my shoots all the time. Now I'm going to Twitter them. Those already go over to Facebook, and they're treated pretty well when they go to Facebook, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Instagram did that too, but now I make sure they're treated a certain way on Twitter. Now, if they come back, that Instagram is going to be more integrated in Twitter the rest of the way the rest of these pictures are. I'll go do Instagram because I think that that covers more of the bases. This right. morning, you were talking about that workflow. Mm-hmm. This is exactly that kind of thinking. Right, and, and but, it, but it gets you down to one platform, yeah. or 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 platforms that talk well, to each well, other, or or it gets you down to I do this here, I do this here, I do this here, right. I do this. I do everything on Twitter because I filter that back out to Facebook. Right. I do everything. I do pictures over on Instagram because I like that community. The cool thing I can do with my filters that all the photographers hate me for, and that goes out to my other things. You know, Google's of course cut out that equation, mm-hmm. but there's a whole other strategy there for how I use that. Um, so, I don't know. It, it's it's, you know, I, I have, you know, all the apps that I use on the front of my phone. And I pull it up and say, what am I doing? I'm doing a picture? Okay, we do this. Am I doing a video? Okay, we do this. You know, I mean, it, it, I know where to go and everything's interweaved, you mm-hmm. know, like you're talking about. So, well, um, you're, One of your stories here is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> well, I put that in. I, I think it's the one I put in because I'm, I'm like, oh, Shell's going to want to talk about this. So I'll put the link in for him. Well, and it actually, um, it's interesting you put it in because one of the things they, so Pebble updated their SDK and um, updated their app for iOS. They, they put a lot of stuff in for, for full integration into iOS 7. It's something that Apple finally allowed people to really kind of tap into. Mm-hmm. Um, Android's had some of these capabilities for a while. It's a little more to configure. You have to go in and configure like these special HTTP pulls and, and, and pushes. Some, of the, some people have built apps that let you do that a little better. The iOS platforms had apps that, that did that to make it a little easier, but they they're, they did come at a cost. Um, but it's interesting because I never realized there were certain things that I have turned on for notifications, like Foursquare check-ins, but I don't put them front and center on the phone. They're just in the notification drop-down. Mm-hmm. So last night after I got the Pebble update, my watch was going crazy because everything that I didn't banner or, or pop up alert i just put it kind of in that background notification center without a front end alert because it's a notification so it just pushed everything it comes through to the watch and i'm like okay turn that one off because i i really i'll be honest <laughs> with you i should have gone in and turned it off anyway because yeah, foursquare all i was doing was going into notification center after a while i'm just clearing all <laughs> I didn't yeah any, yeah wasn't yeah paying attention and i still have but, it on i really like don't i don't check in on foursquare anymore yeah. like unless it's like uh, I'm actually someplace interesting today. I'll yeah. check in. You know, right. I don't check in going to like the grocery store like I used to. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I watch. You know, a certain friend of ours. I watch. Like, all right, he's going to work. All right, he's checking on everything along the way, going to work, and here he is coming back. Here he is coming <laughs> back. Okay, okay. Like every tunnel, every everything, and I'm like, man, I don't do that anymore. I, I just, I think I got check-in fatigue. 
okay. I don't check in on Get Glue. I don't check in there. I just like I still like the stickers. I, I know I love I love the stickers too, but but it's just like eh, it's just something to do, you know. Mm -hmm. um, although I did, I think I did try to go check in on Thor two when I went uh, Sunday, but it didn't pop up. Like it wasn't connecting right. So I'm hmm. like, God, oh, that's that, I'm not even gonna try. You know, I it just. My patience for that. I I'm, <laughs> I, I want things to do it for me. Now you have you know? eye beacons. Maybe now eye we, beacons you know, I want the eye beacons. In. I want to walk up with my Google Glass and say, hey, you're looking at Thor 2. I want to check you in on Get Clue. Hey, right. it popped up your sticker. Hey, you're at the theater, and I know you did this because you just ran your credit card. Uh, you get, and it pops up the Thor sticker. Going, I'm like, cool. That's awesome. Thank you. You know, Like an automatic. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I just, I'm. I, I'm seeing to the future of that, and I'm 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 I don't know I'm just over checked inified I guess um, because I mean I have check in apps for for my location I have uh, a get glue for TV There's a beer check in that I drink a beer, lot of beer beer or something like uh, that. beer buy I, beer I think buy. it is and I still see like some friends of mine that are checking on there or on isn't there Untapped D or something Untapped like that? is another one I think uh, with no E of course um, a checking in a food food spotting. Is another one, although that's kind of fun to go in and see, like, oh, what's around, you mm -hmm. know. Um, that one actually is kind of cool to be like, oh, I didn't know there was this pizza place over here or something like that. And you get a picture of it. You it'll, know? Be, it'll be interesting to see if people, if companies like Facebook, because I know with Pebble, now all of a sudden companies are jumping on the Pebble bandwagon and they're creating apps and creating tie ins in their services. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting if it's like, if if you got an alert on your pebble that said you're at the movie theater and you usually see sci-fi movies, do you want to check into Thor? And it was just yes, no. Yeah. Yeah. Or it was like the Google <clears throat> now ifying it, you right. know, like if, if um, they take it to that level, it could get really interesting. And now they'll have that capability. I'm already seeing the, Hey, Thor's coming out. You're interested in that from what we could tell. Hey, black ops came out this week. I see mm -hmm. you're doing there like, well, both of those I bought. So you're right. <laughs> uh, week before that was WWE 14 came out on uh, for video games. And I'm like, well, I would, but I'm not this year. Thank you for reminding me, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering at what point does this, is it going to get to something where like, Oh man, it still came out this week. You know, that's stuff that I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not good on keeping on uh, up on is like, you know, when Thor two comes out on DVD, I'm probably not going to pay attention to it. Uh, I, you know, most recently I, mm -hmm. I, I went and pre-ordered like three movies that I loved from the summer. <laughs> uh, uh, what was it? Iron Man, Star Trek and, and man of steel, what comes out this week. And it's because I'm like, I'm not going to remember to go get those, you right. know, and then it's like, but I want them and I don't want to delay on them. I want to have the complete. Did Man of Steel have a pre-release digital or was it same I time? I think it did. Well, that's been interesting because I think it's been like the commercials just said uh, Blu-ray and digital, HD digital. Okay. So I'm like, do I got to delay? Do I got to wait for my DVD, man? What's going on here? Yeah, <laughs> so I, I think it does. actually. Okay. So um, there, there's something going on there. I think we're going to start seeing more and more of that. But the, the other thing I really like about uh, with Pebble, obviously, it has to interact with something. It's not a standalone device, whether it's iOS, or Android. Unfortunately, Windows Phone, it's not compatible with because Windows Phones don't have Bluetooth 4. Um, and there's, I don't think, an app. Oddly enough, there's a BlackBerry app, but there's not a Windows Phone app. Um, but with the with the update, so you get the new, you get the, the update on your device, whatever OS you're on, and immediately the app says. Hey, you're connected to your Pebble, and we need to update the the OS on the Pebble. Do you want to update now? Yes. The screen goes black, says loading dot dot dot, gives you a percentage thing down in the lower left hand corner. It's uh, done. You're done. Does you're that good thing to go. does that thing exclusively work on a tether <clears throat> to your phone? Yes. Like it's not like it's not picking up on your like house Wi-Fi or anything as well. Everything goes through the Bluetooth. Well, so on your so phone. it's really only Bluetooth, and it has to connect. And it's really more along the lines of app base. The app kind of tells okay. it kind of like a um, kind of like the um, Fitbit does. Right. So so even so, I mean, nothing. You're not te like internet tethering that thing or anything like that. No. You're just going through an app. Right. So now, the interestingly enough, <clears throat> some of the capabilities are. The apps on the device can go through the Bluetooth on your phone then to create a connection to the Internet. So, for instance, I have, like, I think it's SmartWatch Pro. Mm -hmm. Like, I can bring up my Twitter timeline on my watch. Um, not that I 
want to read the Twitter timeline on my watch because it's black and white and really small. And you don't get those pictures we were just talking about. And I don't get about. the pictures you're talking about. But now that I can get any notification, it's really nice because when I get an at mention on Twitter, I can decide if I want to pick up the phone and respond or if it's one of those spam spam mentions I was talking about. I can just completely ignore it and go about my day. Um so, so things like getting the temperature, it's going to need to pull off the internet mm-hmm. to get your your local temperature. Um, kind of stuff like that, that's where where that comes in handy. Um, I haven't tried a calculator yet. I can't imagine trying to punch numbers in. Yeah. I have used the I have used the audio control because um, I have Bluetooth headphones. And I was stuck on the T and I was crammed in between people. And I'm like, I want to get to the next track. And I, I, I can't reach up and I can't get into my pocket. And I'm like, doot. <laughs> <laughs> so it does. I mean, I could see if you're a runner. Mm-hmm. You're not. You're And you even if you're using just normal everyday headphones that don't have kind of hot buttons on there. And you probably have your, your device in like an armband. I could see you're running. Just tap it. And you just keep going. More and so. more, I'm anti, again, I say this before, but more and more I'm seeing this is the option people are going to go with more than a Google Glass. You think it's, so? It's just more unobtrusive. You know what I mean? Uh, I just think that, I just look this, at this, the display is not there yet. No. Like, no, I look, like, but, wearing your Google Glass, the display is a thousand, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's about. a thousand times better. This, I get better battery life, yeah. and it's, it's a little And we'll see what happens when the second one comes intrusive. in, and I'm hoping I get the invite for that soon, but, yeah. uh. But yeah, it, uh, I just feel more and more like how cumbersome this is versus just having a wash on like mm-hmm. you have. Um, I, I you know, People say, oh, you think people, it'll be cool? It's like, yeah, I think it'll work for the most part, but I really think more people are going to go towards watches. There's an interesting convergence there. As, as long as you get continue, as, whether it's Pebble or um, Samsung or whomever, as long as you get good partnerships out of your out of your um applications like if twitter if i get an if i get an at reply and i have the ability to retweet yeah or i get a mention and i have the ability to retweet in the notification that would make that takes it to the level you get Mm -hmm. or well used to get with twitter yeah Um, they took away from me (laughs) but it, it gets you to that level now i really don't have to reach over to grab the phone um, the other thing I'd like to be able to see is, so I get, for instance, text messages is, is a perfect example. Sometimes I, I, I am so busy moving around and doing this, that, and the other. I have my text messages set to re-notify 10 times. Mm-hmm. I wish there was a way on here. I can quickly close it out on here from the main screen. I wish there was a way to then tell this. It's not talking back in that To not fashion. keep prompting me hey you have a text hey you have a text hey you have a text well it's coming i mean mm-hmm. we're, this is in the early days we're we're beta testing the next generation and apple will just blow everything else out of the water anyways uh, <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably right yeah you it's know a, it's, I, I mean, that's what it is like let everybody else try to figure it out and then we'll do it right mm-hmm. so um but yeah definitely but it's exciting and that's why we do this and that's why we do this podcast every Tuesday, 7, 6.30, 6.30 p.m., live.sorgatronmedia.com, awesome cast. Uh, do we have the Flipboard going yet? I have the Flipboard. Share? So you saw you saw the last one. I saw the last so one. So that's updated with last week's episodes. You can definitely share that out there. And then when I get home tonight, I'll be taking from this week's and sharing them out there. So, And then obviously uh, tomorrow, once you get the page updated, I'll add that to the kind of the front end. Because, uh, well, as uh, it, we mentioned, I think, on here before, we're trying to do mm-hmm. a Flipboard magazine of right. stories that we talked about or didn't get to because right. we put a lot in there just to be safe so we have enough in case something didn't spark a conversation as much. Um, and uh, that's something we're going to share. And if you have this Flipboard app, or now it, actually it's on everything. It's on the web browser. Mm-hmm. I was That was the first time I saw it in a web browser me when too. you sent that to me. I'm like... <laughs> Oh, this is a thing. Uh, and I know I heard about it. I just never had a reason to. You know, I've mostly gone over to Feedly myself. But this is this is a pretty cool thing that, that uh, you know, I think I think people are going to really enjoy. So, so they can follow up more on what we're talking about. 
uh, you know, and it'll have directions back to the the main article. It'll have exactly. the the direction the the page link will be there for for every episode. We're gonna try to keep a core Flipboard magazine with I think the like the last four shows, current and last three, and then they're gonna be migrated into an archive. You can always get back to that archive. Um, I'm actually going to start from last week's episode okay. going forward. So I'm not going to go back through the entire awesome cast. No, back no. And I don't archive. think you need to. Um, but yeah, so uh, that'll be out there. I think I'll, I'll tweet out some the link that I sent you. Um, anyone can read it. And then if anyone actually wants to contribute, some of the people we know may want to contribute. Um, and, and that may actually be a way to get get some additional crowd response if there's some people that want to want to toss stuff into the flipboard um the the other things just real quick uh upcoming and awesome um two things that happened today so they're they're no longer upcoming vine came to windows phone um ipad mini had a stealth launch yeah the mini mini retina you can in the dark of night now get it um blackberry z10 is it Z10? No, I don't think it's the Z. I think it's the Z30. I think I got this. the numbers. Yeah, it's Z30. Hits Verizon on Thursday. So if you're looking for a 5-inch um, BlackBerry device, it's it's coming. But it uh, looks like they're they're taking the T-Mobile um, online only. Um, the Xbox One launches November 22nd. And the PS4 launches in three days on November 15th. So I'd be interested to hear if anyone. I, I know there. I do know a couple converts that are that are moving away from the Xbox and moving know. to PlayStation. I'm not aware. Like I'm pretty sure everybody on the video game site is not getting a new console, which yeah. is going to be an interesting bind for a video game site. Uh, but we're all like, why would we? I look at I it, all that integration thing. in the living room. Yeah. I'm real. Like I'm into the home automation side, so you I'm are. really looking. Like I, I, crazy Krauss is getting it. I'm honestly going to wait. For oh, his. of course, Krauss. Is yeah, getting it. Mr. Mean, Microsoft. Was, he's. Uh, I'm waiting for kind of his review and hear about you know how it works around their house with different voices and different yeah. people, yeah. all that, and and you know it gives me the ability to then shuffle around the existing yeah. Xbox to other rooms. True. Where True. now I now instead of going out. If I want the one and I want all the home automation in my living room, well, originally I would have probably then gone out to fill the other rooms with Apple TVs or something along those lines. Now I can just throw, take that Xbox and move it to another room and I'm I get still, all that capability. Yeah, yeah but then you gotta go play those video games in another room. It, I guess it, it all depends. I mean, the game, I'm only, I, I'm only playing right now. I'm playing um, that. Grand Theft Auto. See, that's, that's my problem is like, well, uh, I love to get Chromecast and just throw it on every TV. And I'm like, only one of them has an HDMI port. Okay. Like, I, I have just mm-hmm. a big tube over here, you mm-hmm. know. I, I don't have any reason to get a bunch of HD TVs. I have one good one in the, in the living room, and that's where I do that. And, and honestly, the tablets. I love watching on my Nexus. Yeah. You know, I just, it's, I think, killer, you know, for, for watching on there. And I know it's a really good resolution and everything, you know, especially while I'm working and stuff. So why put an HD TV in my office, you know, when I have that going on? So, uh, all right, guys, go check us out again. Sorgatronmedia.com, all that stuff. Uh, thank you uh, uh, to our awesome chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com throughout this show. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>